And now we shift to the border crisis. Today, Washington Congressman Dave Riker toured the Federal Detention Center in SeaTac to get a firsthand look at what's going on there. He joins us now exclusively to talk about what the tour was like and to help us break down the immigration crisis. So what did you observe today? Well, we were fortunate enough to meet with about 30 or 40 women today for about an hour. And uh, I mean, really uh, compassionate, um, tragic stories, really, um, about their travels here and the separation of uh, them from their children. Now, the women that I spoke to today, along with Maria Cantwell and Patty Murray, um, don't have children in custody but they are still separated from their families being in this facility. So um, they, they, they want their cases adjudicated. They want things to move forward. They want to know what their future holds. And that's really the bottom line. The other thing that was very, very clear is that Central and South America are on fire with drug abuse, human trafficking, gang uh, activity, corruption, corrupt police departments and military and government officials. And when I asked them, is there any country in Central or South America that you could go to and feel safe? And they said no. And that's why they're coming to the United States. There, there is, they, they feel like there's no place else to go. Let's talk about the compromise immigration bill that did not make it in Congress this week. Break down the key points of that and why you think it failed. Well, I, I mean, I, I think it failed because, uh, number one, look, it's, it, it's just as simple. Sadly, it's simple. <laughs> Democrats are going to vote for a Republican bill. Republicans are not going to support any language that contains anything at all that has to do with a, any Democrat language that might deal with um, language that they would define as being uh, leading to amnesty or legalization. Path to citizenship. Path to citizenship, citizenship yeah. which I have been in favor of from, uh, I don't know, 05 when mm -hmm. I first came to Congress. You voted in favor of this immigration bill. 121 uh, Republicans voted in favor of this. Um, the far uh, far right and um, some of the middle Republicans were no votes and all of the Democrats were no votes. So I've been very vocal on this. I disagree with the president's actions. I voted for this bill to reunify families, provided money for housing residential housing for families together. Um, I have signed the discharge petition. Uh, only 20 Republicans signed. This is the Democrat bill that they brought down to the floor for us to sign to move forward. The only reason we got this vote yesterday was the 20 of us signed onto this bill. Okay. And that forced the vote. So do you think, uh, what are the prospects for this particular bill then moving forward? So there's another bill, which I'm a co-sponsor of, which is the Family Reunification Bill. Okay, just like a standalone. So it's a standalone. So that bill didn't come to the floor yet. So what I'm hoping for is that when we get back, the Senate and the House are both out right now, when we get back, we have an opportunity to vote on this. We have to get these families back together again. Let's talk about the 11 million people who are undocumented in this country. They're living here, they're working here, they're paying taxes here, but they're not getting the benefits many times of those taxes. How do we address the root cause and fix the whole system? Isn't that something we should be doing? Yeah. So, I mean, that is what I've been saying since I came to Congress. Hmm. Uh, the immigration system, the entire system is broken. It needs to be repaired. The problem is that you're not going to get a, a full immigration reform bill passed because you can't get enough votes, because every time you add something you get a vote, a, a vote or two disappears. Mm -hmm. So what, what the attempt now is, is try to take this in pieces, which then sometimes complicates it even further. But the root cause is the turmoil that's occurring in Central and South America, there, they, there's no feeling of safety there, mm -hmm. there are no jobs, people are being killed, raped, beaten, um, and they're coming to America to be safe and to have a free life. I asked them, is, is, there, is, is there a possibility of finding that here? So, do, you, do you feel like America can be big enough to, to welcome these people? I, I think, so well, I, asked, I asked the women, I said, would you rather stay in your country if you were safe, if you had a job, and if you had a home and you could protect your family and provide for them? They wanted to stay in their country. So part of the solution to this problem is to find a way to work with the governments from Central and South America to look out after their own mm -hmm. families, mm -hmm. right? It's sort of like families here in, in King County and around this area, uh, domestic violence and sexual abuse and mental abuse, they run away from home, right? So 
take Guatemala, a family of Guatemalans, they're doing the same thing to their own family and, and, and they're just running away. And mm -hmm. so, yes, we do have to open our borders to, to some, but we also have to be very, very careful here because we know that MS-13 is, um, is just so active, so violent, so brutal. Um, we have to protect our own citizens by yeah. keeping those people out and those that are violating the laws of course, that's my old job. I'm very, <laughs> to very, uh, yeah, very, very intent on doing that too. All right, Congressman, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thanks, appreciate it.